Hello, welcome back to Universe Sandbox. Uh, a while ago I made a tutorial on how to make a habitable planet, but the game has been updated a lot since then, so I'm going to be going over it again. One last thing before we get started. Only 4.3% of people that watch my videos are subscribed, which is extremely low, so I would really, really appreciate it if you could subscribe. So, you're going to start the same way. You're just going to make a new simulation. So, you're going to start by coming down here to this plus. This is the add button. And then you have all these icons on the top right here that are different items you can place in your system. So we're going to start by going to the stars tab and you're going to pick a star for your system. A good star to support life has similar properties to the sun. You're going to want a yellow main sequence as you can see right there. So you could pick one of these that's a yellow main sequence or you can, you can try to get one on here. It's kind of rare, but you can get them. Oh, second try. That's pretty good. 0.7 in the sun, That's that'll probably work, but just to be safe, I'm going to put it really close to the sun, 1.12. Also, come down here into age and put this at zero. This will help your system last longer and allow complex life to develop. Alright, so once you've done that, you're going to come down here to this view tab right here, click on it, and then click this habitable thing. And then when you zoom out, it'll show you these rings symbolizing the heat around the star and where you want your planet to be. So if it's red, it'll be too hot. Green is perfect, and then blue is too cold. So, once you've done that, you can come in here to add again, and then this time go to the planets tab, and you could pick a planet here, but you want it to be rocky if you want it to support life. So come in here to random rocky planet, that's what I usually do. And then you can put it anywhere in the green area. So I'll just put it here. So once you've got your planet, you can turn off the habitable thing so that's out of your way. And here's your planet. So you're going to want to start by making sure it's the right size. Uh, habitable planets work best from 0.6 Earths to like 2 Earths. So I'll just make this 0.8 Earths. So the mass is 80% Earth's mass. And then once you've done that, you can come in here to Appearance and customize the colors you want on your planet. So if you want it to be white or... You can really do whatever you want. You could do bright pink, hot pink. But I'm going to go for more of a natural look. So I'll get these gray colors in there. All right, then you're gonna wanna come into composition and add some water. So now there's some liquid water on here. So if you come into surface and then scroll down, there'll be a sea level thing, sea level slider, so you can adjust the sea level. Uh, that looks good, cause you want mostly ocean like on earth. So then once you have your water, it might be frozen for you, but that doesn't matter because we're going to add the atmosphere right now. So come to surface and scroll down to atmosphere. And it depends on how big your planet is. I'm just going to put one to start, one Earth's atmosphere. And that does look pretty good. The planet is still too cold, as you can see here, negative 151. So the surface pressure, come to atmosphere and try one to start. And then speed up time to see if that changes the temperature. It's rising very slowly, so just speed it up some more. Okay, now it's a little bit too hot, it looks like. Oh, actually, we might be perfect. Okay, so you want your average temperature to be around 20 degrees Celsius. And if it goes down very slowly, then come down here and... And then this slider right here, you can turn it up a little bit and that'll help. You gotta be very precise. You got to watch this, these here and make sure they're not going up or down. And if it's fluctuating up and down, you should be pretty good. All right, that looks like a good temperature. You can also... Okay, also in this surface tab, come down to average albedo 
and make this around 0.3 because that's the same as Earth. And basically what this does is how much light the planet is absorbing from the sun. So if you turn this up, that'll help with the temperature too. All right, so now that you've got that, planets should start looking pretty good. And you can come back into appearance and change your colors again to make it more appealing. Get those greener colors in there. And you can also change the atmosphere colors if you want. You can change you can change the cloud color, liquid water color, ice color, snow color. And the inter interface color is the color of the name on the planet. Um, like if I can show you like all this stuff, what color you want that to be. So I'm going to make it like a blue because it matches the planet like that. Looks pretty good. So now we have this planet, and if you come to Composition and scroll down, it'll show you the similarity to Earth. We got 98, which is really good, and life likelihood's at 54. And you can make this go higher by copying Earth exactly with its orbit, rotation period, and stuff like that. I actually have a video on how to get the highest life likelihood possible, which will be right up here in the top corner. All right, so that is how you make a habitable planet. Some things to remember is to make sure the planet is in the habitable zone and it's the right size. If it's too big or too small, it is very hard to get the temperature right. Also, if you want to add a moon or rings even, you come down here to add and then the moons are here. So we can slow down time a little bit. If you wanted to add like the moon, uh, make sure it's not too close or tidal forces will kick in and rip it apart. So something like that is good orbit. And it should start to orbit over time. There you go. So if you want to add rings, you can come in here to add. And then the ring tab is right here. And say I wanted to add Saturn's rings. It says select object to add ring. So you double click on the planet and then click on this add ring. And since Saturn is big, the rings won't be as close as you might think. But... That is how you add rings, and if you wanted to add more rings, you can. Like that. You get rings on your planet. Alright, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll try my best to answer them. If there's anything I left out, put it in the comments too. And thank you for watching.